yourself and you will know the universe and the gods. To know thyself is what ultimately opens up all of the vistas of possibility within the field of potential in which we all exist. And by knowing oneself, we empower ourselves. So we have to look at our own dark aspects of our own subconscious mind, which is our deep-seated fears. This is what our controllers have understood for centuries. Again, they know it much better than we do. One of the main reasons they know this is because they're incredibly well-read people. In my past, I have worked with some of these individuals. Not proud of that, but I do have an amount of respect for their intelligence. And in a twisted way, they also have care. They care about what they are doing. They want to manipulate people. They care enough about it to do it, and then they do it. So in a way, they're not torn. They're not in duality consciousness. As they think, so they feel, and so they act, albeit in a psychopathic fashion. But you know something? The universe will respect unity over duality. It will respect dark care over no care. That's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow, but it's true. That's why they're so successful, and that's why we're basically continuing to be conquered. There are some people who are coming on to this understanding and who are growing in their intelligence of how these basic methodologies work, but they're in the deep, deep minority. It is a paltry minority of people that do understand this, that do understand any of these methodologies, let alone all of them. And there's more than just what I will get a chance to outline on this show. So tonight we're going to start looking into the exploitation of our primal fears by the hidden manipulators of consciousness on this planet. And to do that, we want to basically list these fears and then explain how these fears are deeply interconnected with each other. Ultimately, they are all interwoven into a fabric they are all interwoven and essentially, in many ways, work as one. And you'll hopefully understand what I mean by that when I go through them, when I list them and then start to talk about them. So, the first is the fear, and every one of these fears, it should be understood, are ancient. They have been with us for essentially as long as we have been here. The first primal fear that is entrenched and enrooted into the psyche of mankind is the fear of darkness. Now that may sound strange to most people, but it is one of the most ancient embedded fears in our consciousness, is the fear of darkness. Our ancient ancestors relied above all else upon the sun, the star which we, our planet revolves around, which gives us our warmth, our light, the ability for the foods which we eat to grow, protection from predators that have better night vision than do we. When the sun would be absent, in our ancient past before we had modern, the, the conveniences of modern technology. The absence of the sun 
would essentially equal something akin to death. Food won't grow in winter climate. Things freeze over. Our ancestors would die of exposure. They would die of starvation if they were not prepared sufficiently to last through the winters. If they were living in non-tropical climates. The absence of the sun each night would lay our ancient ancestors open to predatory beasts like tigers, lions, wolves, hyenas, etc. The sun became a symbol of power of life, of hope, because they would wait for it to rise again in expectation. It would, it would be like a savior come each morning. So the fear of darkness is more deeply entrenched into the human psyche than mostly any of us would imagine. We take this for granted today because we walk into our home and flick on a switch and we have light. However, before that modern convenience was made available to us, essentially, human activity would stop when the sun went down for all intents and purposes. Yes, of course, we could build fires, but for the most part, we lived on the circadian rhythm provided to us by the rotation of this planet, and our activity would correspond with daylight, and our restful time periods would correspond with darkness. A controller knows well this embedded fear. They understand how this works. This is why you will see the sun used symbolically on so many different corporate logos because they are associating their product in the minds of the buyer or the viewer of the symbol, the, the prospective buyer, with all of the things that one subconsciously, through our very genetics, the codes within us, associates with the sun. Life, power, energy, growth, safety, etc. All of these concepts associated subconsciously with the light, the antithesis of darkness, the vanquisher of the thing, one of the things that we fear deeply, darkness. That's the first embedded primal fear in the human psyche. Totally connected with this fear, as I have mentioned in explaining the fear of darkness, is the fear of predators. That's the second primal fear. Again, people of the modern world don't fear the types of predators that our ancient ancestors used to fear, namely animal predators that would often find a human dwelling place, often drag a human 
away from a cave, a tent of some sort, some kind of some kind of simplistic dwelling. When beasts of prey get hungry enough, they'll enter terrain that is essentially owned and controlled by another kind of animal, even if they're vastly outnumbered. So yes, our nomadic ancestors lived in roaming packs, let's say. But even one large predatory animal, let's say a mountain lion, could easily overpower even the strongest human beings among us. Of course, we developed weaponry to begin to protect ourselves against such predators. But even with our ability to create and fashion fashion weapons and use them to our advantage, you always have to sleep. So our ancestors would many times be taken by surprise or picked off when perhaps we weren't in any kind of large numbers. So the fear of predators goes hand in hand with the fear of darkness. Bears, big cats, other kind of animals absolutely have better night vision than human beings. Human beings are not very adeptly suited for vision at night at all. Even other primates, gorillas, apes, orangutans, chimpanzees, they are much better suited for vision at night than are we. Human beings don't have very good nighttime visual acuity. Therefore, this leaves them open to predation by animals that do have much better night vision. And again, we can see how this would be tied intricately together in the psyche, in the collective mindset of our ancestors. Sun goes down, it's dark, we're open to being preyed upon by whatever beast may be, whatever carnivorous beast may be in this region where we're currently living. Hand in hand with the fear of being preyed upon is that ever present every night fear of darkness. They're tied together. One is related to the other. Now, in the modern world, we still see this, although in a different way. Uh, there is still more human activity during the day than at night, even in cities where we have street lamps to light the city streets at night. More people are loath to go out very late at night because they fear being preyed upon, not by animals, but by other human beings. And this is the modern form of predator that most people fear and live their lives in fear of. Now, granted, consciousness is so low in some areas that it would be dangerous to, to walk through certain terrain, 
territory. Man can be as territorial of an animal as any other. And there are some places that most people wouldn't want to walk. Of course, this is due to the level of consciousness that the large portion of individuals in a certain area may be holding. But essentially, what we're talking about here is the fear itself of being preyed upon, of being attacked, of being hurt physically. And most people do still live their lives in fear of this. It goes hand in hand with worldview poisoning. I'm not saying that there aren't any bad people that are looking to harm someone and take what they have on the streets in any kind of major metropolitan regions or anywhere else for that matter, because it's true, there are. What I'm trying to get at here is the underlying fear of a predator and how we live according to that fear. We let that fear essentially control us. And controllers, people who want to manipulate people based upon such a fear, know this well. They know it well. What they know more than almost anything else, what they know better than anything else, is that given the chance the vast majority of people will choose a form of control over a form of discomfort. I'll say that again. Most people will choose a form of control, meaning control that is actually directed at them, rather than choose a form of discomfort. And what I mean by that, what I mean by discomfort is something that would require a difference or a change in how one lives their own lives to correct for something that is affecting them for the negative. In other words... An example would be most people would willingly hand over constitutionally protected freedoms rather than have terrorists run amok among us. The fear of being preyed upon, the fear of being attacked, harmed, is preyed upon itself by controllers, by manipulators. They're going to grant you your safety, but you'll have to pay something in return for it. And it will always, always, 100% of the time, mean a reduction in your freedom. But the manipulator isn't concerned about that. They know that most people are fearful and cowardly. And instead of taking on a problem, they want someone else to solve it for them. So we create whole controller classes for those who, to to control those who we didn't raise properly by instilling any moral values when they were young. And the irony is that that controller class is among them, is from that very group. They haven't had any true moral values instilled in them. 
they're just looking to control somebody because they're psychologically inadequate. That's how they feel. And you know what? This is almost universally true. It is so the exception to the rule that that isn't why a controller really wants to control someone. They they themselves are loathful of something that is indwelling within their own psyche, their own being. And so they want to take that out on somebody externally. Anything but look inward and face the problem. Anything but look inward and then change what you don't like. See, part of what's part of the main problem with the loss of freedoms in this world is that people are apologizers, but all in the wrong ways. They make excuses. They they'll say, "Oh, it's not it's not." the institution itself. It isn't the vast majority of people in this control-based, hierarchical, compartmentalized institution that, that cares very little for human rights, that cares very little for moral substance. No, no, it's just a few bad apples. We apologize for people that we shouldn't be apologizing for. It isn't just a few bad apples in the police and the military. It's a systemic, overarching problem that affects almost all of those people that, that do this job. It's a problem. The problem lies in the very creation of an organization like that to protect us from ourselves because we won't do the work to learn natural law principles, and to teach them to our young. So, if it sounds preachy, oh well. That's how it is. I'm making a vow going forward that I'm going to really, really, really start turning up the heat as far as putting the responsibility on the shoulders of the people that it belongs upon. And that's your average person that doesn't raise their children. And when I say the word raise, I I say it in a very specific way. We forgot what morally raising our youth means at all. And we teach them that all this control is acceptable because they'll have safety. Nonsense. Utter nonsense. And only a fool would accept that mentality. Only someone in deep fear themselves that's controlled and owned by their fear. That's never looked at their own subconscious mind and looked at what they're really afraid of and then worked upon it to make themselves stronger by confronting those fears. And they're under mind control in a lot of different ways. The very nature of what they think human nature is, which we talked about last week. Other justifications that they use for statism and violence, initiation of violence against non-violent people, which is essentially what the state is. Everywhere, every kind of it, in any country, regardless of how oppressive it may get, or how much it may propagate the illusion of one's freedom. It's the same thing. It's the initiation of violence against anyone that doesn't go along with the program. And that's easy to do, folks. It's easy to get people to accept. Easy to get people to accept. Because if you have a population whose mind is in a liquid sewage state by everything that they've taken into their body, by everything that they've taken in their mind that show no will to change any of those things. They won't turn off their television. They won't eat decent food. 
They won't engage in any kind of activity that is edifying in any way. You know that you have them exactly where you want them because you know exactly what their fears are. You know what all the weaknesses of their psyche is. It's child's play. It's child's play. And I know I'll have a harsh tact about this, but hey, I'm not sugarcoating anything on the show. I think I explained that to people from day one. You're not going to hear any sugar-coated explanations of what's happening, nor are you going to hear apologizing for people that wouldn't know morality if it cracked them across the jaw and told them to wake up in a loud voice. And people don't look into this information because they are owned by their own fears. And until they start to confront those fears and work on them with no shortcuts through education, through reading books, through going inward, if you get some information externally, then going inward and really making an examination of self. But how few will take on that responsibility? Anything but that, most people will say. They'll run in the other direction as fast as they can from looking inward. And as long as they do, they'll continue to be externally conquered by controllers who know a thousand times more about themselves than they ever will. By their, through their own willful ignorance, these people have brought this condition upon themselves. Their own willful ignorance. And let's stop making excuses about it. That's how it is. How are we going to change it? Well, the only thing I see that is possible to even do is learn how these dynamics work and then put information out there widely and freely and to get more people to do the same who you can identify as those who really want to learn about these dynamics. And as an aside going into this before I go into the other two primal fears, you know, there's, there's people out there that think that they're going to party their way out of slavery. You know? I'm going to use escapist drugs or just do nothing but hop from one party or festival to the next party or festival. I'll dance my way out of the harsh realities of planet Earth. Well, good luck to you. Very proud of you. And again, people won't want to hear this. They'll take offense, you know. Anything but work on the true, deep, nested shadows of the subconscious mind. And the people who they'll get the most upset with are the people that actually have done this work upon themselves. Because they'll say, you have no right to complain about other people. You have no right to, to, to point this out in others. Well, it is true. Those who live in glass houses should not throw stones. But some of us have shattered our little glass house. And it's a paltry few. The whole idea of thinking outside of the cage that we impose for ourselves because of our own fears. And none is more prevalent than the fear of predation, of being preyed upon. So we'll look to an even more powerful controller to say, please protect us. We'll do anything to be protected from these predators, even give up our freedom, our free will, 
our rights, inherent rights, that no man has a right to take away. Yet because these controllers never hear the word no coming from people in mass, they'll keep taking and taking and taking. Because in their minds, not to say no is to say yes. In their minds, not to say no is to say yes. Whether you agree with that principle, that's what they're operating under. That's the law they're operating under. And the people that do these control jobs, which it's all an illusion. They're not in control of anything. They don't even own themselves. They think they own someone else. They have owners. I've gone into what their owners think of them on this show in the past, and I'll do that again in the future. But you couldn't sit down, sit them down at a table and explain to them that they have owners because their ego is so entrenched. And you know what? Some of them wouldn't even care. They'd say, oh yeah, I understand that I'm wholly owned and operated by someone else, that I just performed their whims for a paycheck. Imagine, this is the moral constitution the moral constitution of many, many, many living beings in our society right now. And, and we wonder how the Nazis did what they did during World War II. We wonder how Stalin accomplished what he accomplished in Russia. And people don't believe that this is going to happen here? When you have people that that's how they think? I often think, what orders wouldn't you follow? What orders wouldn't, you know, a brainwashed military type follow? Sit down and yes, sir, no, sir, and ask them, is there any order you wouldn't follow? I'll bet you they'd be hard-pressed to even come up with something that they, that they wouldn't just unquestioningly obey. Because that's how mind control works. You're following a program. Anything outside your program is unthinkable. Computer program can't do anything outside of what's programmed into it. And that's what most people have allowed themselves to become. An, unquestioningly, an unquestioning robot. Programming in, and that's the, that's the confines of their behavior. But again, sit and try to tell the hypnotized person that the illusion that they see upon the stage isn't actually there. They'll try to tell you you're crazy. And it's all because of spiritual weakness, folks. Let, let's not make any apology. Apolo- about this. It's all about spiritual weakness. This is not something that people have had done to them externally. When I explain these techniques to you, please do not think that I am saying that the person who has the ultimate power in, in wielding these techniques is the controller themselves, because it is not. Their power is an illusion, and I've stated that before, and I will continue to maintain that. They have no real power that has not been willfully granted to them by someone that does not want to think. The end. And I make no apologies for people of that mindset. They have brought this upon themselves. And they brought it upon other people that do value their freedom, and they have no right to do that. They have no right to do that. People say, oh, yeah, people have a right to be as ignorant as they want nonsense. You don't have a right to be ignorant when it affects my freedom, ladies and gentlemen. So go and tell that to the controller that doesn't care whether he's a slave, whether he's a house slave, and will follow orders unto the death like a Nazi robot. You don't have a right to affect my freedom in that way. 
You may think you do all you want, but that's a right you'll never have. So to go back to these fears, darkness, predators, the third fear is interwoven with the protection from predators. Okay? When we're faced with a predator in our midst, one of the first reactions in the subconscious for those who allow this fear to own them, okay, that don't face it and try to correct it, who just give in to this force called fear, which is the shutdown of consciousness and going into the R complex of the brain, the reptile brain, the first thing they want is protection. Well, who to protect them except the strong father figure? Here's the next character in our play in the ancient world. While the sun is, goes down, the predators come out, and then we have to rally around our strong father figure of the tribe to protect us from these animals. But in doing so, we're going to give him complete control. We're not going to solve this in any kind of an egalitarian way. We're going to put this father figure in charge, the biggest alpha male, strong, sharpest teeth, biggest muscles, you know, can throw the spear the farthest and the hardest. And we're going to let him take charge over all of our daily activities in return for keeping him safe keeping us safe from those predators out there. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Anyone? Just sound like a familiar uh, thing that's being played out again in our, in our times? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But I'm getting to something. I'm getting to something that is very powerful that I'm going to get to before I close this show tonight. So... Those in fear run to controllers to protect them against predators. This has been going on for thousands of years because people will not develop courage. Courage is action in spite of one's fear. And the vast majority of human beings on this planet do not have courage. And get as upset as you like about that, folks. The vast majority of human beings do not have courage. They look to an external controller to protect them. And they're willing to give up their rights for their protection. And they expect everyone else to fall in line with that ideology. Then they'll get upset with the people who don't want to live like that and live as slaves, essentially, and say, I grant you no, no ability to take any of my rights away from me in return for protection. And this is a mob mentality. This is mafia mentality. You open up a new store in mob territory, they come and visit you and say, well, you've got to pass protection money. We're the, we're the biggest uh, alpha males on the block, and now you're not going to be able to operate here without problems, without violence, unless we get what we want from you. So you're, we're, you're going to give us a cut of what you're making in return for not harming you. And it's the same thing. This is what every state is on the surface of the earth. I want nothing from any state. I want the state out of my existence because I'm a sovereign being that isn't owned by anybody. You don't own me. The end. The end. No compromise. Zero. All rights reserved. Period. Yet, that, that attitude, that philosophy is so in the minority in, in today's world that it is but a speck of light left in a dark world. He 
people in the freedom movement and in, the, in, in higher consciousness groups, they make the very grave mistake of thinking that more people think the way they think than actually do. And th this is something that is propagated by the Internet itself. The Internet is a wonderful medium, folks. I, I hope we have it for as long as we're, we are here and that it gets even better than it is in propagation of information and transparency of information. However, it does create a flawed way of seeing how many people are actually awake. We think because there is a vocal minority on the Internet that is, are, are beginning to discuss these issues, that this is some kind of common sense, widely known thing, what's, what's going on as far as control goes, the moral issues that accompany it. And this awakening out of this trance mind. It's, it's a, 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 such a tiny fraction of people that you would be appalled if you even grasped how tiny that fraction is. I see this over and over again. People think more people are coming online to this than actually are. I don't want to be a, uh, you know... a naysayer in any way. I don't want to rain on anyone's parade. I just want people to look at things realistically. You know, for example, right here in the city of Philadelphia, a few months back, they had an end the Fed rally on a, a beautiful day, a beautiful spring day, and 300 people, if that, showed up in a, city, in a metropolitan region of like, what, five, six million people? I mean, it, it, this is, it's ridiculous how tiny it is. For people that understand this, the, the effort needs to not just be redoubled. It needs to be thousandfold. For, forget doubling anything. It's, we're not even remotely near the amount of people that we need to reach. And it's largely because people are trapped in these fears. Hand in hand with the fear of predators and darkness, which is, which is associated with predators, is the fear of abandonment. The fear of abandonment by that alpha male father figure. Because that represents having to deal with the predators for oneself. Anything but that anything but that. And in the modern world, that equates to we might have to raise our young morally ourselves. God forbid. Because we don't want to live morally. We're going to teach it to our young people. We'll just have the controller come in and take care of any acting up. That's what we'll do. Why should we live in a moral way? Why should we teach that, that to our young? That's the hardest thing there is to do, to instill actual, proper, upstanding moral values in young people, the hardest thing there is to do. Why should we be burdened with that? Let's just have big daddy government do that work for us by, through control, through violence. Let's have him enact violence, whether the person is themselves violent or not, even peaceful people that have not harmed anybody, will set these unwavering laws that if you do not conform to, no matter how peaceful you are, violence will be enacted upon you. And we'll accept that, even though it's a trouncing upon our human rights, our inherent human rights that aren't granted by man and can't be taken away by man. We'll accept that. We'll just willingly hand over all of those rights to the controller for keeping us, say, us safe. Because God forbid, should we not have him, should we be abandoned by Big Daddy, who protects us from the predators, we could never accept that because that would mean we're all, all on our own. We're all on our own. And we don't know what to do on our own. We don't know what to do. We've never thought for ourselves. 
We've never protected ourselves from encroachments of violence by ourselves. We've always had somebody else do that for us. You see how this is a timid mindset of a timid person that doesn't understand their rights or care about their rights. They could care less about their own rights or the rights of others. They're just in our complex reptile brain mode all the time. I'm going to explain why that is after I talk about hand-in-hand, tied inextricably to the fear of abandonment, is fear number four. Well, hey, if we don't have the light and the predators are here and, oh, our alpha male father figure has abandoned us, we don't have him anymore to protect us, what are we really afraid of happening? And we're afraid of this breaking out. And it's the word you hear all the time associated in the minds of the mind-controlled slaves with the removal of control. Play this word association game with people. Okay, You tell people, no control, no masters. They'll give you back the word freedom. But tell people the first word that they associate in their mind with the word anarchy, and they'll say the magic word, because this is what the fourth primal fear is, the fear of chaos. There it is, chaos. We don't have these controls and we don't have Big Daddy telling us what to do because we don't think for ourselves. There'll be chaos. And you know what, folks? Maybe there would. So I'm just going to come right out and say it. I consider myself an agent of chaos. I'd rather have all of the violent offenders of the world out in the open rather than covert mind controllers manipulating us from behind the scenes. I'll take the physical chaos. And you know what I think? I think that the physical chaos would teach us a lesson. I think... That's how we learn natural law, by making the mistake of ever letting things get to the point where chaos would really, truly break out. Then, only then, because of our ignorance, our apathy, and our laziness up to this point, I think only then are we going to start to understand how natural law really works when we experience enough chaos in our lives. And guess what? We don't have order now. We have chaos now. We have chaos in a covert form, which is arguably much more sinister than chaos in an open form. But we have nothing that resembles true order. What we have is control, and control is chaos. Because it's based upon fear. Fear leads to confusion we strike out, we lash out and try to control, and ultimately what that creates is chaos in the world. Unintended consequences of every kind and the lack of order. But controllers are too dumb to figure that out. And what I mean by that is not the, ma- the real controllers. I'm talking about the people that think they're in control. The people who've never really read any books in their lives and have no view of history whatsoever and yet think that they're in control of somebody physically. Right. Please don't make me laugh. If it wasn't so sad, I would burst out hysterically laughing. Because controllers out there, people who think you're in control, you have owners. You have owners. And I worked with your owners, and I know what they think of you. Look at Henry Kissinger telling the military that they're dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in our foreign policy decisions. I mean, imagine this, openly telling people that. 
openly telling the military, you're, you're our dogs. Dumb animals. <laughs> and, and people still will, will follow these people's orders. This is a person who's responsible for positioning of troops of, and troop deployments. To, to make strategy based upon whether these people are going to live or die. That, 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 that governs whether these people are going to live or die. And yet, they'll carry out his bidding just to get to hurt somebody. Or, oh yeah, the ex other excuses are, and that's ultimately what it is. You know, it, it's, it's inadequacy and they just want to hurt somebody. Let, let's be honest about what it is, folks. Okay? Let, let's everybody get as offended as they want, turn it off because you don't want to hear any more, get it all out there. It ain't going to change nothing. Okay? You want to hear what's really going on in the world? Go back and listen to my interview with Neo two weeks ago. These are, these are the owners of the police and military. Make no mistake about it, they have owners. And that's who their owners are. And I'm telling you that out directly because I know this is the case. But hey, they're going to follow their course probably because they don't want to hear it because it's too painful for them to admit that they got played. You got played like a fiddle. Played. As a matter of fact, you didn't get played as if it was in street lingo. You played yourself. That's what happened. You played yourself. But your ego is too, too powerful to ever let you admit that and walk away from it. You're committed to that course. Just like the Nazis were in 1930s and 40s Germany. The same thing. Can't step back from your own mind and ego and admit that what you're doing is wrong. Because you don't really believe the nonsense that your owners are feeding you, that this is moral for you to do. They don't, they don't believe, believe that. See, I, I ultimately do believe in, not believe in, I recognize the natural law principle of ordo ab chao. Now, there are people out there who will think this is all evil, and there's not. It's a good side to it. When you start looking into deep meanings in occult words, symbols, phrases, etc., when you really do your study of the occult, this is not a negative principle in and of itself. It is twisted for negative reasons, and that is what I would call chaos sorcery, which we will get into in future weeks. But see, ordo ab chao means that order will eventually emerge from a chaotic situation or condition. And in fact, when one does not do one's own work, so much, when they, when they fall out of doing their own work upon their own consciousness, upon their own psyche, upon their own subconscious, so much that they created for themselves a, a condition of chaos, the only thing that will bring them out of that condition is more chaos. Is, it, is that condition becoming so unbearable and so uncomfortable that finally their ego is broken down? It is melted in the fires of purification to a point where they say, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot continue this course. I must change because it threatens the very well-being and continued well-being of the entire species. Not just any one individual or group of individuals. The whole is detrimentally affected by the ignorance of the whole. And sadly, I think that's the path we've chosen. I don't think we've chosen what is known as the middle pillar, the ground where we refuse to accept control and will not become a controller ourselves. That's called the middle pillar in the occult. We've chosen what is known as the left-hand path, the path of severity. This is the path where 
sadly, we have let our ignorance, apathy, laziness, and cowardice have to become our greatest teachers. And that maximizes the pain and discomfort through which the lesson will be gained. <clears throat> Good luck, because it didn't have to be that way, yet that's what humanity is collectively choosing. And I'm not here thinking that really what I'm saying is going to ultimately change that decision. I'm just helping to explain what we've chosen, folks. That's all I'm doing. I do this show not in service to human beings. I do this show in service to truth only. And secondarily, for the human beings that do want to understand this and do want to live free, do want to understand themselves, may they gain something from this? Wonderful. And they'll take it and they could parlay that into their studies. And I, I, I will say that as a secondary goal, I do, that, I do this for them. Who I certainly do not do this for are, are the people that want to remain ignorant, apathetic, lazy, and cowardly. And lastly, I certainly do not do this for me. Because if you think I really want to be doing this, you're as crazy as a fruit bat, is all I can say. If you think this is what I envision my life to be, explaining how mind control works, you have to be as out of your mind as anyone has ever been. If you think I enjoy this. I do this because I recognize it as a responsibility based on where we're at in consciousness on this planet and for no other reason. In the interests of truth and for those who it may serve to help them transcend their current mind-controlled condition. Everybody else is going to get exactly what they have coming, exactly what they deserve, and they're going to get the lesson one way or another, What, no matter how painful it may have to be. They're going to get the lesson. You're not escaping the lesson. I've said here before on this show, and I'll say it many more times, there's no escape, period. There is no escape. You're not getting out of here. The way out is through Quite simply, that's it. The way out is through. What is meant by that is you don't get past the, the, the lesson that is on deck for you to learn until you go through it by mastering it, by learning it well and mastering it. So those are the four primal fears. The fear of darkness, the fear of predators, the fear of abandonment by the father figure or controller, and the fear of chaos. And this keeps people in a nice, neat little prison, all self-generated by the mind. And the controllers, the owners of most of the people of this world know this perfectly. They, they know this like you know 2 plus 2 equals 4. This is secondary child's play. Common sense to them. Yet how many people have really deeply explored anything resembling that, what I've laid out here tonight? Very, very few. Because most people will do anything to avoid turning inward and looking at the shadow of the subconscious. The shadows are what we have to delve into. The way out is through. The whole idea of this new age nonsense of not looking at the negative is just that, nonsense. Everything is not okay, folks. I didn't say everything is Anything is not working as it should be working. The universe, its laws work flawlessly at all times and all places. That doesn't mean everything is okay. We're choosing things that are not okay for our evolutionary development. And in many cases, in many ways, we're devolving instead of evolving. And it's caused very few people want to do this work. They want to look externally for a solution. The solution isn't external. The solution is in our own thoughts, our own emotions, and our own actions. The end. It's internal. 
When we change that, the external world will change, and not a millisecond before. And that is exactly as it should be. That doesn't mean that based on where we say we want to progress to, we're doing things that are okay, because we're not, as a whole, and mass. What do all of these four primal fears have in common? And this is the key, the crux of the whole thing. This is the most important thing to understand about the whole thing, of how, how we are exploited through our deep, subconscious primal fears that are encoded right into our DNA through our ancient ancestry. The main thing to keep in mind is that all four of these fears are completely associated with survival. The instinct to survive is the strongest instinct in the human species. Now, with that being said, every one of these things, the fear of darkness, the fear of predators preying upon us, the fear of the dominator or controller type abandoning us, or at least let's call it the protector type, abandoning us. And the fear of chaos breaking out. These are the deepest seated fears in the human psyche. They're all based upon our desire to continue to survive. And that's ultimately what a controller is going to base his sorcery upon. The fact that it knows you'll trade anything for survival. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you now a deep occult ideology and a dark occult ideology. And for those who have read a bit, some may have heard this before, and I'm going to sum up in explaining this ideology, I, I will not call it a philosophy, it is an ideology, it is a way of thinking that does not necessarily, does, that does not truly lead to higher wisdom, which is what philosophy is about, the love of wisdom, Sophia. This is a dark occult principle, if you will. I won't even call it a principle. Again, it is simply an ideological path, so to speak. And this is a satanic and luciferian concept. In the dark schools of occult, it is taught that the first and foremost responsibility of the individual is to self-preservation. This is stated in dark occult schools as this sentence, which I'm about to say right now. Self-preservation is the highest law. In Luciferian and Satanic occult sects or schools, if you will, secret societies, orders, whatever you want to call them. Cults is a, is a nice word for what it really is. There is the principle, or I would say really a non-principle. This is a ideological concept that is embedded into the minds of the dark occult initiates. Self-preservation is the highest law. This is a mind control technique. And it works through the exploitation of humanity's deepest primal fears, namely the fear of darkness, the fear 
of being preyed upon, the fear of abandonment by the alpha male dominant father figure, and the fear of chaos. And the, the occult controllers know this. They know this well. And they've gotten people to swallow all of their control methods based upon exploiting these four fears. All because they know that the deepest underlying human instinct, not philosophy, but instinct, which is based in the reptile brain, the instinctual survival brain, they get them to accept the, the dictum that self-preservation is the highest law. And all I will say about this before I go to some phone calls, because I see we have a couple callers on the line. Please hold on, whoever is calling in. I just want to wrap this one part up, and then I'm going to take your calls. All that I will say in response to that occult ideology, and that is the first law of dark occultism, for anyone that truly knows about it. In all of my journeys, spiritually, and everything that I have learned, everything that I have taken into myself, all wisdom teachers that I have taken in some of their knowledge, books that I've read, In every aspect of my personal spiritual journey up to this point, I can sum up that journey in one sentence. And it would be this. Self-preservation is not the highest law. Self-preservation is not the highest law. Let that sink in. Caller from New York. Caller from New York City, you are on. What on earth is happening? Hi, Mark. Thank you for taking me. Uh, my name is Mike. How are you, Mike? How are you? Uh, I'd like to thank you uh, for all 19 shows so far. Uh, you know, nobody on, on radio that's being broadcasted digitally or not is really talking about or being as honest and as being as truthful and as wide range with the topics and knowledge that you have uh, pretty much on radio at all that I've heard. Uh, I'd like to thank you for, for doing what you're doing. I thank you very much for, for that uh, compliment, Mike. Uh, I would just say just keep in mind this isn't about me. I appreciate the compliment. This is simply about this information, and I want to thank you for listening in and uh, helping to spread this information in any way that you can. Thank you. Uh, what I wanted to uh, basically talk about was the actual, uh, what you were just bringing up, is actual self-preservation. Um, yes. I feel, that, I feel that once you you woken up, to somewhat of a knowledge and, and you and you, you you sit down and you, you start realizing you know what you used to think is not really what you think anymore and you know you sort of moved on um it's sort of even tough to live in this matrix that we're surrounded by this system that has already been created before we even got here so right. based upon the horrible banking system and the way things are it's almost like tough to even survive in this community but as you're saying self-preservation is not the highest law but it, it, for, it's almost like they're preying upon that very, very fact, and the whole system is set up against that in the million ways that they can, as many laws as they create, you know, and things like that. So uh, just give some uh, some ideas on how to um, how to maybe even uh, build a better system within your even within your own community, or get uh, other people together, almost on like a uh, on, on like a spider web basis, where you didn't need any one person doing it as long as someone was doing it within the community by you. Thank sure. You. Well, we have access to lots of technologies to 
uh, propagate this understanding. I mean, start your own. If you fully grasp these concepts, start your own radio show. Uh, get, hand out cards in the local community to get people to listen to it. Start your own website. Uh, start up a meetup group. Uh, host free documentary screenings like uh, what Truth, Freedom, Prosperity does in the Philadelphia area. There's many ways to get active with this, but it is all about ultimately, we need to keep in mind, it is all about ultimately changing the way that we think about ourselves in relation to the world and other individuals, other souls on their journey in the world. And uh, respect is what this is ultimately about. You know, it's, it's about understanding that we are sovereign, understanding that we have inherent rights as beings in the cosmos by nature of us being born into the cosmos on our spiritual journey. And we should understand and respect those rights and teach that value. That that's what value, what we have to hold as our primary values. This is what value means. What do you value? You know, do we value money above morality? Do we value money above our rights? Well, some people sadly do. We need to reverse that. That's, that it's, it's something that is inherently wrong, and it has to be recognized as something that is inherently wrong and spoken of as such unapologetically. Um, let me just go back to the idea that self-preservation is not the highest law. This is probably the one overarching principle that I feel I have learned in my overall journey. That being said, I'm not saying that we should not strive to survive. And that when we are threatened, that we should not face a threat that threatens our survival. And I think there's no greater threat to survival than the globalist agenda. These people want to poison us. They want to uh, uh, wipe out a large portion of the human population, and they're indiscriminate about it. They don't care who's doing good or bad. It's just it, people are people to them, and they look at the whole world as one neck for one noose. So if they're going to wipe out a whole bunch of good moral people with people that they consider vile or animalistic or uh, predatory or what they call useless seers. First of all, I don't think anybody has a right to make that decision about someone else's life, but, you know, they, they look at it as their threats to them because they own this planet. They, they think this planet and their resources belongs to them and people belong to them and they can do with it what they will and they can do with people what they will. I think they're delusional, um, but, you know, as I was saying before, the state of most people is that they don't have any of the developments in consciousness. They don't have intelligence, care, or will. And nature will respect at those who at least have some or even all of these qualities, even in an imbalanced, twisted way. And that's a hard thing for people to understand. Nature will respect and grant power in some form to those who are unified with, the, with their thoughts, emotions, and actions, even if it's not for good. This is why they're basically kicking our rear ends, folks. They are unified. As they think, so they feel, so they act. And I'm talking about the dark occultists, the globalists, the sorcerers, the mind manipulators, whatever you want to call them, the Illuminati. It doesn't make a difference what you call them. They're the psychopaths who are running the show here. And they have their energy focused. They have their consciousness unified. As they think, so they feel, and so they act. And the universe will have a modicum of respect for that. Whereas it will not grant any power to or respect for those who do not have any of those principles unified. We'll say we want something and then do something completely different. That is the antithesis of 
creating that dynamic that we say we want. So our, our actions or behaviors betray our thoughts and emotions. And that's the true mark of the beast. That's why they say that the, the beast's mark is carried in the head and in the hand. Because when what is in our thoughts is betrayed by the actions we take with our hands, we, we have accepted the mark of the beast. It is a symbolic thing. This is, this is a symbolic way of looking at duality, consciousness. We have to bring our consciousness into unity consciousness. As we think, so we feel, so we act. I think I say that at least once on every show because it is the most important principle to understand in taking anything away when you're listening to this show. Bring yourself into unity. And uh, that is why I will make the seemingly dark and bizarre statement that in, in a way I have respect for the dark occultists that are running the show here. And I do not have much respect for people who are completely in oppositional consciousness with themselves. With themselves. That is the worst place you would want to be. Particularly those who know and do nothing. Wow. Is that not a place you really want to be? People who know and are not taking action. Man. All I have to say is that's the last place I'd want to be. But um, our opponents in this grand chess game, if you will, they're unified. They have a dark form of intelligence. They have a dark form of care. And they're willing to carry out that vision. We have to come, become unified in the same way for the right reasons. And when we do... That's what, when I say we truly become activated and then I have infinite respect, meaning I've looked again and seen something change. Okay? That's what respect means, to take another look at. <laughs>